Joining us now is Soleil Tagvian, our new extension irrigation specialist. And we want to talk a little bit today about irrigations uh, scheduling. And Soleil, what kind of questions are you getting from farmers from around the state about setting up irrigation operations or, or kind of planning for their, uh, their farm and their needs? Well, the two uh, important questions when it comes to irrigation scheduling is the timing of irrigations and then determining how much water to apply. And um, with irrigation requiring uh, water, obviously, and energy, uh, it would be very beneficial to our producers if they can uh, decide if they can wait maybe a few more days before they apply water and they use the energy to apply the water. And there's lots of different methods, but you want to talk about one in particular today. And Absolutely, that's correct. Um, as you mentioned, there are different methods. We have methods based on canopy temperature, uh, and we have uh, uh, wonderful tools and information available on Mesonet website. And we also have methods based on soil moisture sensors. Um, so we basically measure how much water we have available in the root zone of, of crops, and then based on the water that's available, we decide if it's time to irrigate or not. And you have some examples of those today, so let's take a look at the first one you have to show us. Yes, uh, this is uh, what we call a tensiometer. Uh, this particular one is 36 inches long, so this can be installed in the field. Uh, at the bottom tip of the sensor, there is a, a porous uh, ceramic cap, and this cap comes into equilibrium with the soil. So this would be installed, this part of the sensor would be out of the ground, and this is at 36 inches depth. Now, the reservoir here is filled with water, and as the porous cup comes into equilibrium with the soil, if there is a, a, so a soil water deficit, it's going to uh, drain some water from this reservoir, and we're going to see a negative uh, number here, which represent a, a soil water suction here. This next type is, uh, again, similar because it has a, a porous cup here, uh, which comes into equilibrium with the soil water content. Inside this porous cup, uh, there is a heating element that's, that sends a, a, a thermal pulse. And then there is a thermocouple that measures that, that thermal pulse. And based on the changes in the temperature inside this porous cup, we can estimate how much water is available inside this cup and in the soil surrounding it. Uh, the next type of sensor is, again, very similar. Uh, we have a porous medium here. And there are two electrodes. And these two electrodes that are embedded here they measure the electrical resistance, which is also a function of soil moisture. Uh, so the larger the resistance, the smaller the soil water content. And these two look sort of similar. Uh, they are. They are uh, based on what we call a capacitance uh, principle. And what they do, they send an uh, electromagnetic field. Um, and the frequency of this field depends on water content in the soil. And how do you choose what's right for your operation? That's a wonderful question. Uh, when it comes to soil moisture sensors, there are many different types of sensors and they provide different numbers. These sensors, for example, provide a measure of how tight the water is held by soil particles. These sensors provide a measure of a volumetric water content. So to select the best type of sensor, you really need to have a good knowledge of the soil type in that particular field of interest, the type of, uh, the, the, type of the soil, the type of the sensor, uh, the number that you're interested to get from these sensors, um, the type of the crop and how sensitive the crop is to water as stress, and also some cost, uh, because these sensors um, cost very differently. A lot of range there. Mm -hmm. Before we go, we want to mention that today is a significant day, uh, March 22nd, World Water Day. Tell us a little bit about that and event you have planned uh, coming up on the OSU campus. Um, yes, World Water Day has been celebrated for the past 10 years by hundreds of organizations and um, educational institutions. And we have organized a two-hour seminar uh, to um, kind of talk about the interconnection between water and energy, how we need energy to be able to apply water and extract it, and how we need water for 
uh, producing energy. And that's Monday on the OSU campus? Yes. Okay. Saleh Tagvian, thank you very much. Terrific information, and we'll see you again soon. <laughs>